So good afternoon and welcome everyone. I'm Yudita Rikamadar, the EuroCES Country Representative for Japan. Today's webinar is about the Marie Skodowska Curie Actions Individual Fellowship Program. And I would like to welcome our participants. Our first presenter is uh, Przemek Jankowski, who is the MSc Policy Officer for the European Commission. Hello, good morning. Um, so I will jump directly to my slides. Uh, one second. Uh, one second. Hello, good morning, um, everyone. Uh, thank you, Judith, for inviting me here. Um, I will today present my um, present the Marie Skłodowska Curie Action Individual Fellowships. Um, first of all, uh, I will just give an overview uh, of what the Marie Skłodowska Curie program is about. What are the uh, overall objectives um, of the program. Then um, I will go to uh, some details of the individual fellowships uh, with some focus uh, on our Japanese audience. Um, and then I will also show you a few uh, hints and few um, details about uh, about the application and about the, the technicalities that you will have to go through uh, once you are interested and then once you would like to uh, apply for the Maris Kodoska Curie Action. Uh, but also I will not go into too much details of description of the action because I will be followed by uh, two MSCA uh, fellows who one did it one is gonna do it so basically i think that would be also a very nice hands-on on how the procedure looks like from the perspective of an applicant so let's start with my presentation um one second so the european commission is actually uh, supporting many initiatives. Uh, there, there are initiatives, uh, for example, on security, on agriculture, and there is also an uh, initiative and a budget dedicated for uh, research and innovation. Um, this is done uh, basi based on the framework program, uh, which is uh, planned for uh, seven years. The last one was uh, called Actually, the last one was called uh, Framework Program 7. Then we are now in Horizon 2020 till the end of this year, from 2014 to 2020. And here, uh, from the next year, we will start the next seven years Framework Program called Horizon Europe. Um, so in this big budget, in this big Framework Program th that is divided in three pillars, uh, there is a pillar on excellent science, on industrial leadership and societal challenges. And uh, the Maris Skodowska key reaction with the budget of over 6 billion euro is in this excellent science pillar. So this is just to place you that uh, is within the overall uh, framework program for research and innovation. In uh, Maris Skodowska key reaction, there are four actions. There is uh, an ITN. Uh, which is more for a doctoral training and networks. There are individual fellowships that we will talk about uh, today. Uh, there is a research and innovation staff exchange and also COFAND. And I will focus on the individual fellowships today. However, I would like also to drag your attention to COFAND action, which also support um, postdoctoral fellowships in Europe. Okay. So let's start with an overall key features of the Marie Skodowska Key Reaction. The program is based on mobility of researchers from all over the world. And you being in Japan or you going to Japan, the mobility is already uh, within this action. So here, uh, this requirement very, is very natural in a way. Uh, the rule is that you should not stay uh, more than one year within the last three years in the country where you are going to spend your fellowship. So it, it would mean that if you are 
uh, living and studying and doing, for example, your PhD in Japan, and you, when you are moving to Europe, that's perfectly fine. However, if you are, for example, doing your PhD already, for example, in Germany, uh, then uh, you cannot do your postdoc in Germany anymore, but you have to, to move, for example, to France or, or to other um, European country in order to be eligible. So it's not attached to the nationality, but rather to the place where you uh, where you live, when you where you work. Now, what is also important is for researchers from all over the world, and um, we do not have uh, any treasures, any limits, uh, thresholds, any limits um, when it comes to nationality. So, uh, in fact, we have 28 percent of the uh, of our fellows coming from uh, outside. Of the of Europe, so basically that's quite fair, and we do not have any any limitations towards that, any any support for European fellows uh, fellows only. Everything is decided based on excellence principle. Uh, so if you compete, uh, you are in a fair competition also with your European colleagues, for example. Then there is a focus on training and career development. So my Skodowska Curie Action is still a research project. It's still about the excellence cutting edge research, but uh, we also emphasize uh, training and career development elements uh, in form of uh, soft skills. So for example, trainings on things that you uh, can use in, in future, like for example, how to communicate about my research in simple words, how to apply for grants, how to start your spin-off. There are many of those. Uh, we do not, uh, we are not very prescriptive about that, but your research uh, will also be enlarged for all of these elements um, that are related to, to soft skills and then uh, further career progress. What is also important is that Maris Kodowska key reaction is uh, also emphasizing this non-academic sector collaboration. Uh, in Europe, uh, we are a little bit lagging behind the collaboration with the non-academic sector, with an industry, but also with some, for example, uh, NGOs or, or other uh, entities that are not necessarily uh, perceived as industry. Um, but this collaboration between academic and non-academic world is not as developed uh, in Europe as, for example, it is in Japan or in the United States. And here we are emphasizing uh, this. So if you have in mind, for example, to work for a company, to do a research for a company in Europe, for example, that's also perfectly fine and we will support it. Uh, at every stage of the career, however, today we will focus on the individual fellowship, which is entirely focused on the on the postdoctoral training. And we the program is bottom up uh, has a bottom up approach, which means that we support all possible kind of research and whatever you you think of and whatever your research uh, idea of a project is, uh, the Maris Kodowska Key Reaction can support it. Uh, we have eight different scientific panels. I will talk about that later. Uh, and those panels are not competing with, it, with each other. So basically, this is quite fair and transparent. And of course, uh, we also offer attractive working and employment condition, which is important here is to understand that the Maris Kodowska Key Reaction is not a program to equip the lab uh, or to build a new facilities. It's rather focused really on you, on people. Um, and uh, we emphasize, uh, and this is actually an obligation to give an employment contract to, to you as a fellow. So basically you do not get a stipend or any other form of, uh, of enumeration, but rather employment contract with some benefits. I will talk about that a little bit later. Um, so like that, uh, this is quite attractive and it should allow you to focus on your research only without any other side uh, activities in order to, to, to support your, uh, your living. Uh, as said, we have fellows from third countries coming uh, to the Maris Kodowska Key Reaction. There are 28% of them uh, in overall. Uh, so if you are interested, you will not be the first, and uh, there are already um, 
fellows from Japan, I will talk about that, uh, who are participating to this, uh, to this program. So Japan in overall, uh, when it uh, comes to the third country nationals, uh, has 200 uh, fellows that were participating into the Maris Kodoska key reaction over the last seven years. Um, the majority of them uh, is within the staff exchange, so short exchanges, but out of these 200 Japanese fellows, 19 are doing European fellowship in Europe and uh, 16 are doing postdoctoral uh, fellowship also within this coffin that I told you, and I will talk about um, later. There are also 17 uh, global fellowships uh, in Japan that are hosting actually the researchers coming to Japan. So there are two forms of this individual fellowships, and I will uh, describe it a little bit later. But let me just say also about the scientific panels. So as I said, the Maris Kodoska Curie Action is a bottom-up uh, program. Uh, we have eight big scientific panels. Um, and when the application is coming, we actually count the number of applications in each single panel, and then we divide the whole budget according to this number. So basically, the panels are not competing with each other. For the moment, from uh, all these applicants, this is for the individual fellowships uh, and, uh, and applicants with a Japanese uh, nationality. Uh, the most prevailing is life uh, panel, and then the environment, social um, sciences, uh, because we support them as well, so it's not uh, only uh, close to the market research or other, but um, uh, science and humanities are also supported by the Maris Kodoska Curie Action, engineering, chemistry, physics, and mathematics. Um, so basically, when it comes to the European Fellowship, um, one thing you have to keep in mind is that the European Commission uh, is never signing a grant agreement with a physical person. Uh, so it's always an institution, uh, it will be university or a company that will actually send the application and all the links that the commission will have will be with this institution. But the European Fellowship is relatively simple because you just choose an organization that you are interested in and then you get in touch with them. And we, the Maris Kodoska Key Reaction is over 20 years already uh, quite successful in Europe. So basically all big universities and also all big companies, um, they already know about the Maris Kodoska Key Reaction and they will kind of know what you are talking about. They have sometimes structures that are prepared to help you to write an application. So uh, basically that should be relatively easy. We have also some services that will help you. I will talk about that later. But so the, 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 the objective of that is relatively simple. It's you, researcher, that is finding an organization and then together with this organization, you uh, are preparing an application and you are submitting it to the um, European Commission through the portal where the, when the link is uh, below, funding and tender uh, opportunities portal. So that's a European fellowship. If you would like to go to Europe, you find an organization, uh, country, research area, and uh, you apply directly. Now there is another type of individual fellowship, which is called global fellowships. Um, we will have the example uh, as well. And here, uh, the idea is um, to um, go out of Europe for a period of time of two years. Uh, so basically, once you are established in Europe, but you can be also of a Japanese nationality, you, for example, uh, doing uh, spending the last three years, for example, in Europe doing PhD, and then you actually come back to, uh, you can go to Japan, uh, to one of the organizations, you perform your research. And then after these two years, uh, you have one uh, year to come back, to transfer this knowledge, to tie the relation with the third uh, country organization. And there are 17 uh, of those uh, now in uh, Japan. So here there are um, some requirements, and once you are writing an application, you will go through all of them. Uh, here only shortly, I would like to draw your attention on this uh, point, 
which is a potential of the researcher. So that there is excellence, impact, uh, and uh, uh, implementation element of the of the uh, evaluation criteria. Uh, but also what is important is this potential of the researcher. So this would mean that um, it is not, uh, it is important, of course, to have publication, to have a long track record, but also if you are, um, let's say, at the early stage of the postdoc, you just finished your PhD, for example, and you do not have a big history of that, then you still uh, can be very successful in competing with other um, researchers because uh, there is an emphasis of this potential of the of the researcher so um as i said we, in this framework program we have uh, now uh, the last call for the um, individual fellowships uh, it was open in april it will uh, be closed uh, in september on the 9th september if everything goes uh, well because now we are in this period of uh, affected by covid 19 so this may be a little bit extended but i would not count on it but rather take this date and uh, try to prepare if you are interested in this however if you will miss this date um don't be um, very sad because you can still apply next year we have um we have our calls every year we try to keep them more or less at the same time okay in the year uh, 2021 maybe there will be a small shift because it's the first year of the of the work framework program however the next years this will still continue uh, on the yearly basis. So like that, even if you miss one deadline, you can still apply to another one. As you can see, it's 324 million euro uh, budget, so it's relatively uh, substantial. Um, and those are two years projects. Uh, in case of Global Fellowship, there is this one uh, additional year. And those are the amounts that uh, you uh, as a fellow supposed to receive. And as you can see, there are researcher unit costs uh, that are only for researchers. And this is majority of the whole expenses in a, in a program. There, there are some, uh, there is a part of institutional unit cost for research and training and for management that is go going to institution. Uh, but a, a majority of the budget is actually covering your salary. Uh, and then there is a country correction coefficient here, which adjusts a little bit to the expenses in the country where you will do your fellowship, so it should be quite, uh, relatively fair. So the advantages are the employment contract, the allowances, uh, but also uh, the administrative support from the host institution. Also, we have a big Marie Curie Alumni Association, so basically if you have some question, if you encounter some uh some problem or challenges you always have people uh to help you and also i was mentioning about the services that they can help you to uh, apply uh, and to write an uh, application it is very important if you are interested in applying to contact the so-called national contact points those are special services uh, appointed by governments uh in each member state and also abroad uh, but uh, if you are interested to go to Europe, I would contact them. So basically, if you go to this link, to this funding and tenders opportunity portal, where everything is there, and you will choose Marie Skodowska Curie Action here, and you will select the country here, you will have a list of person that uh, actually you have to contact in order to get more information. And sometimes they can even do the pre-screening of your application and they can really help you because they are really professional, uh, especially that they will give you this uh, touch of the country where you are going. So basically there are sometimes some challenges, different one in different countries and they will help you and guide you on that. So very important to do to go through this step and not to go without any uh, external support because the competition is still for of around 15 20 percent so it is not so straightforward and just a word about cofund which is also supporting the postdoctoral fellowships there are doctoral program and there are also fellowship programs and this is actually the, the postdoctoral one however um here 
you do not apply, but actually those are already a pro projects or programs that are supporting postdoctoral fellowships uh, through Marie Skłodowska Key Reaction. So you actually go to the EuroAccess website when you will find the, the area of research that you are interested in, uh, the organization, and you contact directly the organization. So without any application to European Commission anymore. So it's just a, for funding agencies, uh, big national or regional funding agencies in the country where you would like to go. And uh, at the end, I would like to uh, give you a few links. So the first one is to our website, when in the uh, understandable language, uh, you could also read a little bit um, about the Marius Kodowska key reaction. What I mean understandable is not so uh, legal, let's say, because it's just to describe the action. Now, if you are interested a little bit more in details, you need to go to this funding and tender opportunities. And this is also a portal for communication between the project and the commission. Uh, to be precise, a research executive agency, which will actually monitor uh, your performance and uh, there will be a project officer dedicated to your project. And there is also a Facebook page where you can see examples of, uh, for example, individual fellowships. We have the fellow of the week uh, and you can see how it looks in real terms, actually, and um, the, 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 the fellowship and, and, and the achievements. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank you, Arigato gozaimasu, and uh, I would like to also to listen to uh, other colleagues that will uh, present today the experiences with the Marius Skodowska Key Reaction. I would like to wish you a good luck, and uh, Judith, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for the very uh, informative presentation. And uh, I would like to mention that uh, actually in the coming weeks, we are going to have a national contact point uh, representatives uh, talk in our webinars. So I would like to encourage our listeners to actually attend those and uh, submit their individual questions to us uh, via email at a later date. Our next presenter for today is uh, Dr. Naoko Iwata, who is a thermal engineer at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. I, she's going to be an MCAI fellow uh, between 2020 and 2022. Uh, she's going to talk to us about the hint list uh, on how to actually apply uh, for the fellowship and what kind of pitfalls there might be. Hi, my name is Naoko Iwata. I'm a Marie Curie European fellow. Uh, from this year to 2022. So I've been a summer engineer at JAXA for 13 years after I got master's degree in aerospace engineering. I obtained PhD in two phase for while working four years ago. Uh, I applied MSG standard European fellowship last year and I will start my project this October. My project acronym is Pot cross. Uh, I will study two phase possible system by conducting experiments and uh, constructing models. My host organization is University of Parma in Italy. Here are titles of 10 points. I will talk one by one. First, uh, it is better to read Guide for Applicants carefully. All information about MSGIF is written in it. You can ask questions to your access staff or national contact point. Uh, in my case, I made a mistake. I didn't notice the definition of the family allowance. I submit my proposal as no family allowance, so I will not be able to receive it even if my family status changes. Uh, second point, what is important in MSCA is translational and training aspects of the project. The applicants will receive expertise, research and management skills, networking uh, and communication skills and so on, to so hands-on training and educational activities from host organization, as well as the applicant will transfer 
how or his skills during the specific research activities. The final goal of the fellowship is the applicant's development in career and skills. It is important to show your ambitious goal, but not too ambitious and realistic and feasible plan to achieve the goal. Uh, explain how your project would provide a great impact on your career, uh, science community, and European society and industry. At the same time, it is also important to convince the reviewers that you and your host organization would successfully accomplish your project in the fixed time frame, indicating realistic plan, mitigation plan for risks, and the uh, capacity of the host organization. It is better to pay attention to the format and the editorial items of the proposal before start writing. They are indicated at page 34 in Guide for Applicants. It is needed to download the template of the proposal from the participant portal. For the subject, typically the applicant or the researcher are used in, instead of I and we. It is also better to pay attention to acronyms. Their formal names should be indicated when they are used first time. In my case, I wrote the draft proposal in the wrong format. After I corrected the format based on your access staff's comment, the number of pages to write increased by two pages. To organize your idea about the project, I recommend think and explain process before start writing the proposal. In my case, first I thought about what is my originality? What do I want to be? Which skills do I need for it? Then I wrote, I, then I wrote down my thought and then I discussed it with my folks and Brush it up. What I learned the most from my proposal writing experience was the importance of logic, clarity, and specificity. It is needed to explain your project without any logical leap, indicating proper references and specific and quantitative information so that even non experts can understand. Here are two examples uh, from my proposal. First example is research objective. At first, my draft was unclear, so I explained why the uh, summer management is a critical issue and uh, why uh, the promising heat transfer device is needed with uh, indicating some references and uh, quantitative information. Second example is dissemination of the project. My draft lacked specific information. So I indicated related work package and the proper names of the conference. It is necessary to write everything as indicated in Guide for Applicants, properly and perfectly. If you skip the requirement to be written in proposal, you will lose your points. Here are items I missed in my draft proposal. First, I was not mentioned gender aspects of my project. It is better to mention about it even if there is no gender gender dimension in the content of the research. Second, intellectual property right. Uh, a PR is important to uh, indicate how, uh, it is important to indicate how you and your host organization treat intellectual property right of your research. Last one is ethical issues. It is not included in the main part of the proposal so at first, I didn't notice it. I completed 
with the help of host organization, the ethical issues needed to indicate related European, Italian, uh, and the university's regulations. Uh, I highly recommend starting now. If you don't decide the host organization, first you find it and discuss the project with your supervisor. It is better to start writing the proposal as soon as possible. From my experience, taking time for review and revision is essential to succeed. Here is my way. Uh, I decided the host organization and my project uh, plan last June, and uh, I started writing the proposal last July. Uh, I revised my proposal more than seven times, so it took me two months to complete it. Uh, I thought I should have started earlier. My draft proposal was, was drastically rushed up by these people's feedbacks. It is highly recommended receiving some reviews from your access staff, uh, NCP coordinator in your host organization's country, and the people in your host organization. They are MSCA experts. And I also recommend receiving feedbacks from your colleagues. They will check the logic and the appropriateness of the proposal, even if uh, even they even if they don't know about MSCA. My last point to uh, emphasize is to never give up. It was very uh, hard, uh, hard for me to complete the proposal. I sometimes felt depressed at hard comments from people who checked my draft. I had, uh, I had to write the proposal in between my work. I felt, some, uh, I felt that the fellowship was beyond my capacity and lost confidence many times. When I managed to overcome this, I think the experience brings my personal growth. So thank you very much. Uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Um, that was most informative. I think uh, we have all learnt a lot from the pitfalls and the difficulties of uh, writing a, a grant application. Thank you again. Our next presenter and the last one for today is Dr. Giovanna Rujic, who is the Assistant Research Professor at the Vinci Institute um, of Nuclear Sciences at the Department of Material Science at the University of Belgrade and she was an MSCA fellow between 2018 and 2020. Uh, since she completed her, her grant, um, she's going to talk about her past experiences. Okay. Um. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jovana Rujic and I am a past, uh, very fresh fellow. Uh, so I just finished my project in the middle of this pandemic. So it was, um, last two months it was a bit hard for us, for me and my supervisor, but we managed to uh, to finish. So I will talk about uh, a little bit about my background, uh, how, how I am uh, related to Japan as well, and uh, a little bit about my project, but mostly I will uh, speak about uh, my um, experience with the application. Okay, so
the first uh, the background um i graduated from the um, university of belgrade i did my phd at um, uh, Faculty of Technology and Metallurgy and Department of Metallurgical Engineering. Uh, when I finished, uh, I did my PhD at, uh, as well as the uh, Wienchai Institute of Nuclear Sciences. So that was my first uh, job. I got it as a PhD student. And um, after I finished my PhD, I uh, participated as a, a postdoc uh, researcher a researcher at Bulgaria Academy of Science just for uh, uh, five months. Uh, then I went back again to Vincha Institute and uh, I applied for a position uh, at the National Institute for Material Science uh, in Tsukuba, Japan, uh, neighbors of JAXA. And uh, I started in July 2016, and I stayed there for uh, a little bit longer than two years. Uh, in the meantime, I applied for Maria Curie Individual Fellowship, and uh, I got it in 2018. So first of all, I want to um, point out uh, the participant portal. It is very important uh, uh, to um, check everything on the portal. And uh, if uh, it, I know it's a bit uh, difficult to find what you are looking for, but uh, uh, just uh, take your time and uh, uh, somehow introduce yourself uh, uh, to the portal and what you want uh, to search. So if uh, you search for the individual fellowship, then uh, use uh, uh, this engine, uh, search engine, and then you will find uh, uh, the grants. And then uh, you will find the individual fellowship, the opening date, the closing date. If you scroll down, then you will find this. Uh, so this is very important. And uh, I really recommend you to uh, read the uh, the manual and uh, this IT how to uh, uh, do. So uh, it's very, very helpful. And you saw from Na Naoko's presentation that it's very important. So you can choose uh, um, uh, the fellowship that you want to apply, and then you need to register. So when you register, you will find a similar uh, portal, just you will have uh, uh, these um, uh, left side of the screen different, but again, you will have an individual fellowship. That's uh, our topic today. So when you apply, then uh, again, you should read a uh, manual first because it's very important to get know the all um, phrases and the all uh, points that is necessary for, for your project. Um, Another thing uh, is uh, how to, if you use it. So there are many, many uh, uh, stuff. So on the left side, you can find how to apply the, and some very useful uh, um, things uh, for your uh, project submission. So I applied two times for my Mercury Individual Fellowships. And the uh, first time I, I applied in 2016, uh, and this is the results of uh, my uh, evaluation report. So basically, uh, I failed, uh, and um, okay, so I failed because I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't understand uh, how uh, um, what I should explain. I, I thought that I should focus only on my research. So I wrote everything about my experiments, what I want to do, how I will do it, why is it important. I put a lot of references and it was like seven pages. So basically it looked like a short um, research paper. Uh, then I really didn't focus on the impact. I didn't understand uh, why impact is so important. 
and what I should uh, write uh, uh, right there. So, and uh, also the implementation, I just wrote work packages, but I didn't explain and I didn't divide it uh, very uh, um, precisely. So me and my supervisor, we were thinking that uh, because it was the first time for me and for him and for my host institution as well. So we, uh we thought that if we focus only on the on the research it's um it's that is the most important thing then uh i went to uh, i went to the um to the seminar actually and it was grant in practice organized by uh, Eurexis japan it was in tokyo 2017 and I saw uh, great presentations uh, and uh, the presenter, they really inspired me. And I learned about a survivor's guide. And this is uh, the most helpful um, guide that I, I read. So I really, really recommend you to check this one as well because it will help you through all the process and uh, you will find a lot of helpful tips how to uh, how to manage your uh, um, your submission and uh, this is the most important photo for me because i thought that uh, my proposal um, is going to read uh, like a bunch of people all experts maybe 20 of them and then um, I, I just saw this photo and it says that it's like a regular room with uh, regu regular people, uh, scientists from the field. And uh, it's like you are writing a paper. So it's not a big deal, just focus and uh, make everything clear. And then I revised my uh, previous uh, uh, a previous uh, application and then I uh, got a new results and I was very very surprised so I focused also on the comments from my previous uh, evaluation uh, report and I improved uh, my my application so I got funding so the page distribution if you can see now it's a uh, bit different so at the beginning i for the excellence i had uh, seven pages and uh, in the second application i had four pages so i learned how to explain my research in the simpler language and i tried not to use uh, the phrases like uh, scientific phrases that it's uh, very uh, complex so I explained my research and then I also focused uh, how to uh, how to explain uh, my integration in the new institution in the host institution and how the uh, this uh, fellowship will improve uh, my uh, research and as well my uh, professional experience and also I learned how important is uh, uh, the project outreach and how to communicate uh, with wider audience. I mean, I'm doing metal uh, powder metallurgy, which is not very uh, interesting for the for the people. But also, I participated uh, last year in the research night, and I was very surprised how kids uh, love my research. I mean, they were thrilled. They were just asking questions and they wanted to learn more. So it, it was very, very good experience for me. And also the implementation, I focused on that to explain uh, clearly what I want to do and uh, how it will impact my career as well, because it's very important, not only results of your project, but also how you will improve yourself as a researcher and, and as a person as well. So this is my project. Uh, the title is Design and the Modeling of a Metal Matrix Composite. So basically, it was a fundamental research uh, in the experimental work. So, and uh, I did some computational work because I wanted to uh, make a model for um, 
powder metallurgy uh, uh, techniques, uh, specifically for the uh, for the mechanical alloying, because that's the, the the one of the basic techniques that we use in powder metallurgy, and uh, we got a results uh, very. Uh, good results actually. So this is uh, the how model looks like, and he, uh, you can see the mill. And uh, if you want to learn more about uh, um, this uh, model, you can go to the uh, website of uh, the Adam software, and you can find it in the database, literal delta database, uh, because uh, they selected uh, our paper. Uh, for uh, the for their um, uh, database and uh, another thing um, while I was doing my research I met um, the entities of uh, Bulgaria uh, it was very very helpful uh, for me because they uh, uh, they recommend me to uh, uh, sign up for the Maria Curie Alumni Association uh, where I met uh, many uh, past fellows, current fellows, and uh, not only individual one, but also from uh, uh, all actions. And um, I really recommend you when you uh, get your funding to apply for this association. Uh, and you can find many chapters inside the association. So uh, I participate in Bulgaria chapter as well as the Western Balkan chapter. And, uh, but you can select the chapter in, uh, in the country of your host institution, but also you can join uh, to a chapter uh, in uh, your uh, um, home country if you want to go back. So basically, it's very important to do some networking and it's very helpful uh, not only for uh, for you as a researcher, but also for uh, you to present and to expand your uh, collaborative network. So I think it, th this is very, very important as well. So this is uh, the photo from the uh, last year. Unfortunately, this year we didn't have a gathering, but I hope uh soon everything will be back to normal so maybe we will have uh, another one and i really looking forward to see you guys um probably next year or when you get your funding uh, i wish you good luck and if you have any questions please send us or uh, just email or okay thank you Thank you very much. Again, that was most informative. So basically to um, sum up, if you're an experienced researcher and uh, you would like to uh, give your career a boost, or basically if you would like to work overseas and have new opportunities to learn or a chance to add some sparkle to your CV, then uh, we wholeheartedly recommend that you apply for the European fellowships, the global fellowships. And um, please uh, keep in mind that this is for experienced researchers. And uh, we welcome any questions at japan at uh, The link shall be put online and this video will be um, disseminated on multiple portals on the Euroxas Japan Facebook page, on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and also on our portal. Again, thank you very much, uh, Przemek Jankowski, uh, Naoko Iwata, and Jovana Ruzic. Thank you very much for your time and your um, invaluable input. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Judith, for organizing it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>